I had my first pro fight, and I'm gonna keep it real. I got TKO. I don't think it's considered a knockout. I think it was TKO. <laughs> I might have took a nap. I might have took a nap. I might have woke up in the referee's arms. But let me say though, for whoever never got knocked out or never got put to sleep, it's really not that bad. <laughs> what you mean it's not? Think that about bad. it. You don't feel shit. You wake up in somebody's arms. Did you have a headache? Nah. Nothing. I, I did have a headache. <laughs> but it felt like a normal headache. So it wasn't so bad. I woke up, the referee was there looking me in my eyes. I was happy to see him. I was happy to wake up and see somebody. It's better than waking up and not seeing nobody. <laughs> <laughs> they got you in a dumpster in the alleyway. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Suni Imhotep. And today I have a very special guest. He is a prominent 10 Planet competitor. He's competed all over the world. He's also an entrepreneur. My friend, Kamoy Anderson. Yo, 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 it's your boy Rated R. Uh, I'm super happy to be here on the podcast. Uh, I've been talking about coming to California for a while to do some work with SUNY. So I'm happy to be here. Let's get into it. You've been out to LA a couple times now, right? Yeah, I've been out to LA a few times. Uh, not one of my favorite places to be, but... <laughs> Why? You know what it is? I think I just never have a good experience in LA. Never? Most of the time... I'm not in the good areas. I'm downtown. Yeah, skid row. Chilling <laughs> with homeless people. It's smelly. Yeah, I never had a good experience in LA. And it reminds me too much of New York City. I don't like places that remind me of New York City. Well, that's a good segue. You from New York. I'm sure everybody could tell by the accent. It's, it's heavy. Yeah, New York City. Yep. Why did you leave New York? Honestly, I left New York City to join the military. But the reason why I wanted to join the military because I felt like my life needed a boost. I was living like everybody else, working two jobs, living paycheck after paycheck. <coughs> oh, fuck. Started already. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the more I talk, the more my throat get tickled. So whoa. Whoa. Pause. Hey, yo! Heavy pause. <laughs> heavy, heavy pause. Heavy pause. Heavy pause. Heaviest of pauses. Let's get, let's get back into it. Yeah, man. I was living like everybody else, and I knew I needed to do something to give my life a boost, like... And I knew the military, the military will put you in a good position in life and which it did for me. So I joined the military and from there I ended up in Texas. I started in El Paso, Texas, and I just recently moved to Austin, Texas like two years ago. I hear Austin is, a, is an amazing place. Yeah, man. Austin's pretty amazing. I feel like every city in Texas separates itself from the other cities. Yeah. Like Dallas is Dallas, Houston's Houston, yeah, yeah, yeah. Austin's Austin. Like the cities is never... Too similar. And it's pretty far apart, too. Each city is like a good two hour, two to three hours apart. How, how far is it from Austin to El Paso? A good nine hour drive. <sighs> two hours on the plane. That's disgusting. Nah, not That's even. Disgusting. Because... A decent road trip is a minimum of at least 10 hours. A decent road trip. Okay. I can see that. I'm used to the road trips out here where it's like you drive two hours, three hours, and you somewhere else. Maximum like four or five. Wait, hold on. You used to be driving across the, the country, though. You're right. That's <laughs> true. I was. Yeah. So I was. A little 10 hours should be nothing to you. No, nah, it's not. It's still nothing. I love driving. So that's, you know. People always think I love driving, but they don't understand. Like, I don't love driving. I just rather have my car. I want to be in control of my facts. damn destiny. I don't want to be working on... Another man's time telling me when I got to go to the airport, right. telling me when I got to return a car rental. <laughs> I want to decide when the fuck I want to go back. Yeah, nah, I, feel like I'm, I agree with you 100%. And then peep this, and you could have all your shit in your car. That's right. When you travel on the plane, you got to get a book bag. You got to pack certain shit. Yeah. Whatever, you don't have enough shit. Yeah. But you could pack, you could throw all your shit in the car you want. I even keep a pillow and a sheet in my in my trunk. <laughs> you just never know when you yeah, got to nah, pop out the sheet, have a little take a nap. picnic. You just never know. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I like to be prepared for everything. And I feel like when I have my car, I'm always prepared. Word. Let's let's talk a little bit first before we get into the state of jujitsu. how you got into martial arts to begin with. That's just how it was in high school. That was a culture, not high school, that was a culture of New York City. Mm. We always slap boxing, yeah. always wrestling. Like, I remember, I remember all the way back in elementary school, we used to be walking by the lunchroom mm -hmm. and there used to be like an area with just a bunch of trash from the, the, the cafeteria. Yeah. And the, what we do when we see that? Body slam. <laughs> Try to body slam motherfuckers <laughs> to that shit. Yeah. And it was fun. It was like a daily thing we do and it was fun. So just growing up, always wanted to slap box. And you know how it is in the hood. Get a pair of boxing gloves. We yep. outside boxing. Yep. So it was always just an activity we do. I took it a step further. I remember it was when UFC first started popping. I remember guys like Rampage, Chuck Liddell. I ordered some UFC gloves online and I started a little parking lot. Oh, yeah. You remember that? You remember, I remember that? that? 
yeah, I, I started that. a little parking lot, that, yeah, 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 a little street fighting thing going on. It was it was fun, bro, what man. What year was that? That had to be like two thousand nine. Okay, two thousand nine. Two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Yeah. yeah, fresh out of high school. That's crazy. I'm on the match. My prize right here. I'm undefeated. This is my nigga. You Kimura see me? Right Lay it off, boy. You want it? I'm gonna fuck the YouTube yeah, so we started a little parking lot brawl, and it was fun, man. There was some a little bit of money up, no crazy money. We yeah, had no yeah, money, yeah. a little twenty dollars up, <laughs> twenty dollars up. Yeah. So just doing that, me and my friend, we decided like, hey, like let's join the actual gym. And at the time, we didn't have that much money either, but we was really into sport. With me. Also, I should mention, before even all of that, I was wrestling in high school. Okay, yeah, that's so, important. Yeah. Right, so with that experience you, right did there... Did you wrestle all four years? Uh, I kind of came towards the end of my freshman okay. year, so I started okay. messing with the wrestling team a little bit during the off-season, yeah. and then we just continued from there. Okay. So with just having that wrestling background, it's kind of hard to avoid MMA. Yeah. You yeah. got wrestling, you should be doing MMA. That's how it was. So that's what really got me into it, man. I started wrestling... Then we started the um the backyard stuff. Yeah, from there I just joined the official gym and then just took it off from there. Did some competition. You said you you started competing. What were you competing in when you started? Oh, we started competing in jujitsu tournaments because okay. at the time all I knew was wrestling. I wasn't even doing real jujitsu. I was okay. just fucking wrestling. <laughs> yeah. And it was like tournaments like Naga points tournaments. Oh where yeah. All you yeah, need yeah. to do is fucking wrestle. Yeah. If you get your two points and stay on top. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Funny thing is, I was even staying on top. I wouldn't even know what to do on top. I was oh, really? taking motherfuckers down and just letting them back up. <laughs> Looking for a tech ball. That's all I. I have videos on YouTube of me doing that. That's all I knew how to do. Wow. Would you, did you ever get sub back then too, or no? No, I didn't get sub. Wow. Even then, because at, the, white belt, you at the same time, it's still the white belt division. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so true, it's got, true. So technically, I was kind of cheating because if you have wrestling experience, <laughs> you're supposed to be intermediate. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to be rolling with the blue belt. You're supposed to be like, yeah, you're supposed to be intermediate. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how it happened. You were in the military. Did you do anything in the military? Because I know the military has like boxing and, and different stuff like that. Did you do any of that when you were in the military? The funny thing is... Also, you, what, what branch of the military were you? I was in the army. In the army, okay. Funny thing is, you would think that. You would think I was doing all that cool stuff in the military, but my unit was so ass. Like, they didn't they didn't give a fuck about our personal needs, what we wanted to do. They didn't care about nothing. They just give a fuck about the mission. Yeah. The mission, the mission, the mission. <laughs> Ask anybody I used to be in the military. The mission, the mission, the mission, the mission. <laughs> like, who gives a... Yo, there be days when ain't shit going on, ain't no mission. Yeah. But they still don't want us to do shit fun because the mission, the mission, the mission. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I didn't do none of that fun stuff in the military. But the funny thing is, I got serious back into training again once my unit deployed, because my unit deployed and I didn't go with them. Mm -hmm. So it was just pretty much like 10 soldiers left behind with shit to do because everybody's gone getting shot at and blowing up. <laughs> we from New York. Fuck ISIS. Once everybody deployed, we didn't have shit to do. We sweeping every day looking like idiots, yeah. not doing shit. And then I was like, yo, I got all this free time. I need to train again. And also I was weighing like 208 pounds. I was big as hell and I wanted to get back into fitness. Yeah. And I knew it would be easier to get back into it if I had like a coach, had a team, had yeah. some kind of structure versus trying to go to the gym by myself, trying to motivate myself. Yeah. So that's what really got me back into it. What's the transition then from you getting out to being a regular civilian again and then starting your training journey again? Yo, the funny thing is I acquired a lot of MMA fights while active duty. Oh, really? And I didn't know that. It's shocking because being in the military, we the some of the most busiest people ever. Yeah. So for the fact that I'm even able to train and go away for a weekend to fight, yeah. I acquire at least seven to eight fights. Wow. Active duty. Wow. Nobody in the military knew I was fighting at all. <laughs> How did and they not know? Because I didn't want them to know my business. I don't want these niggas to know what I'm doing <laughs> in real life. I don't, you don't ever tell the military what you're doing in real life. Okay. Because think about it. Imagine I tell these motherfuckers... I'm fighting MMA, and now it's time to do PT, and I don't feel like running. They gonna be, <laughs> they like, gonna be oh, like, "Oh, you're MMA yeah. fighter, yeah, you can't yeah, run, yeah. you can't do ten push-ups." Like, if you really don't want to do shit, and you just act like, "Ah, this shit hurts," yeah. they gonna look at you. Are oh, you MMA fighter? You should be uh, 
So it would you would have just been putting a target on yourself mm. if they knew you was a fighter. Okay. Cause they would have been expecting you to be like a super athlete. They didn't want you to do the most. Maybe. So nobody knew I was fighting. So every time when I had a fight schedule, I always had that anxiety, like, fuck, man. I hope no crazy shit pop up where they're telling us, even though it's a weekend, we need all soldiers to report in. Mm. Cause that happens. The military, they own you. They could you could be home smashing your wife and you get a call, everybody show up now. <laughs> You have you to go. go. <laughs> oh, you got to go. So surprisingly, I was able to gather so many fights without nothing crazy like that happening. So yeah. I was real lucky for that. And you said you had how many? Like seven, eight fights? I had a good about seven to eight amateurs fight while active duty. Okay. A lot of people don't know that. I don't really talk about the military much, but a lot of people don't know like I was in and I was like fighting at the same time. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Was this when I met you? Were you in the military when I met you? I was in the military. <laughs> yes. Wait, that was like 2006. That was like 2017, yeah. 2017. I went to one of your... That was your, my first fight ever. That was your first one? Yeah. That's crazy that yeah, I was no? the first one. I didn't know that was the first... Bro, I thought you, <laughs> I thought you had been fighting. Wait, let me I tell... Didn't know hold you. on, let me tell that story. I even got that to begin with. So my coach, just because they saw I know how to wrestle, and at that time, if you know how to wrestle, then you automatically a fighter. Oh, yeah. They just think yeah, you're yeah, yeah. going to be successful. So one of my coaches was like, you want to fight MMA? And I was like, Me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know cause I didn't really sign up To be a competitor I just yeah. wanted to Get in shape So he was like You want to fight? I was like uh, I guess I don't know Yeah. And in my mind I'm like And the funny thing is This was around a time Where not everybody Knew how to wrestle of So if you knew how to wrestle oh, You was punishing everybody <laughs> You was already a top of, You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> so I was like Shit I guess I was weighing like 200 pounds, I think, mm -hmm. and I had to cut to 185. That was, This was when you fought the dude from Greg Jackson's gym, right? Yeah. Wow. Right, right, That's right. That's crazy. Right. And that was in New Mexico? Yeah, that was in New Mexico. Wow. I remember that. That's funny how that even happened because I was working for Google mm -hmm. at the time, driving around, doing some photography shit for them, and I happened to be in El Paso, and our mutual friend, May, you remember May? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So May, May. Mm -hmm. May, shout out to May. I asked May because we were training at the same gym in D.C., mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, I'm in your home, I'm, I'm going to be in your hometown. Where should I go train? She was like, oh, you go to my old gym in El Paso. I was like, all right, cool. So I went there. And I walk in, I'm training. Y'all, y'all, whoever was on the team was loving me. They was like, yo, come back, teach a class. You remember that whole shit? <laughs> they was like, yo, come back, teach a class, whatever. Yeah, it was really on your shit. And they were. It was just all for your, your Muay Thai now. Oh, that's true. Yeah, the Muay Thai. That yeah, was the yeah, first yeah. thing they saw before anything else. Yeah. I stayed there and I came back, I trained, and you were in the class. Or I don't know if it was me who asked you or you asked me, but I was like, what's your name again? No, that was me. That it was you? You was like... Soon he was like, you know somebody named, <laughs> somebody named Melton? I was like, yeah. And then he was like, we started laughing because I had heard about you. I remember watching the the, the backyard fights that y'all was doing yeah, and yeah, all of that. Yeah, yeah. And he used to talk about you all the time. Yeah. I ended up training at your gym randomly in El Paso. Yeah. And then we met that day. And then well, maybe like a month later, <laughs> I was in your corner. Was that a month later? I feel like it that was like, like two weeks later. Maybe, something like that, yeah. yeah like two weeks, two maybe two weeks to a yeah. month later, I'm in your corner <laughs> for your first amateur fight. Hey, let me, I didn't know that was your first fight, Let bro. me put it out there, man. This man was working. You was in Denver, right? Yep, I just went to Denver. My man was in Denver, and he drove down to Santa Fe. Yeah, what was New that, Mexico. like four or five hours? Five hours, Denver, yeah. 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 Santa Fe to corner me. That was my first. Apparently, he didn't know that was my first fight, but know. that was my first fight. Know. So I really appreciate that right there because yeah. I needed, you know, somebody that, you know, felt familiar, somebody that I feel like they knew what they was doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. I still, man, that's a whole, I forgot about half of that stuff. That's crazy. Okay, so you were at the school, you were doing MMA, and because obviously now you're only doing jujitsu. Yeah. So at what point did you decide while you were doing MMA, I don't want to do MMA anymore. I just want to do jiu-jitsu. Before we get into that, I got to talk about how I became 10th Planet because that's a super important uh -oh. part. So I was training at the traditional gi gym, right? Mm -hmm. And I had a homeboy that was doing open mats every Sunday at 10th Planet. Oh, yeah, that's right. You did. You started with the gi. So he knew I was doing MMA and he was like, yo... You should come to Open Matter 10th Planet. They got MMA fighters there. They got this guy named Andy Varela, this mm -hmm. guy named Ricky. And I was like, all right, bet I'll come through. Came through, became cool with all them dudes, Andy and all them dudes, because they was all fighters at the time. Yeah. So I just started going to Open Matter every Sunday at 10th Planet. And after a while, I just started liking the whole no gi system. I started sparring with them. I started just doing MMA training with them. As a fighter, you're going to come across this a lot. You're going to accidentally end up at a place 
and it's gonna feel like that's where you belong. Like it's your home. It's gonna feel like that's where you belong. Like the atmosphere feels right, the people there feels right. Mm -hmm. You're gonna feel like this is where I can level up. Mm -hmm. But this is where the lesson comes in. Instead of me doing that sneaky shit where a lot of these young fighters do, like dip off on they they coach and don't even communicate or tell know. nothing. Yeah. I sat down with my coach. At first, I was trying to, it was like a relationship. I was like, yo, I know you my girl, but shorty right there. You know, <laughs> sure look good. Can I date both of you guys? Yeah. And my coach was like, you know what, yo? Just be full-time at 10th Planet. I think that would be good for you. Oh, wow. He told you that? Yeah. Wow. This, and, was, at, this was at break. Yeah. And he, he didn't even say it in no malicious way. Yeah. He Because he knew what I'm doing. He know I'm fighting MMA. And he knew the guys around, they could only take me that far. Yeah. And he knew what 10th Planet had to offer. That's love. So he was like, yo, you know what, man? You should you should just be full-time with them. I was like, you sure? Because I'm telling you, I was trying to do both, bro. Yeah. I didn't even know how the hell I would have maintained that. I was trying... Only because out of loyalty. I just didn't want to dip off and left my, my coach like right, that. Right. Out of loyalty, I want to do both. But he put me first. He knew what was best for me. And he was like, you know what? Just be full-time. I was full-time 10th Planet. Mm -hmm. But let me... Shout out to Andy Varela, though. Because he's the one that kind of motivated me to even join 10th Planet. It was just being connected with him. Like I'm, like I'm saying, just being around like-minded people like yourself, other yeah, yeah, serious yeah. competitors. Like, mm -hmm. being around Andy, that just, just made me want to be 10th Planet because... He was doing everything I want to do. He's fighting MMA, doing no gi grappling. Mm -hmm. So he kind of was a motivator for me to even be 10th Planet to begin with. I remember that day when I made the decision, I came there and I was asking the owner. I was like, hey, what's the prices? Andy heard me ask him for the prices. He got excited. He was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My man got excited. So shout out to him because he helped me be where I'm at right now. You know what I'm yeah, saying? If, yeah. if I if I never met him, who knows? I probably would have never been 10th Planet. I probably would have been fucking have on some heavy ass gi right now. <laughs> some heavy ass hot ass gi right now. Okay. <laughs> so that's 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 gonna move into my next question. <laughs> so did you mainly focus on no gi because at the time you were doing MMA? Or was it just that you didn't like the gi anymore? I think it started with MMA because I'm always getting ready for MMA fight. I'm not gonna wear a damn gi with an MMA gloves on. I, mean, <laughs> I, like. I disagree with you on that, but well, you wear a gi with an MMA gloves on? No, but I think personally, this is just me. I've heard other people say this, and I never really understood it. But I do think that training with the gi helps your no gi. Because you kind of get to understand how to control somebody. Mm -hmm. And then if you understand how to control them with the grips, you can kind of modify those grips. Because it helps you to understand what you need to control in order to do certain things. So it helps me understand control a little bit better. So when I'm doing no gi, you know, I'm, you, I'm all about control. You're not wrong though, but we talking about what's going to benefit me in MMA. I'm still I'm an I'm, MMA fighter too. I right, but shit. but you just said you feel like the gi will complement no gi. Which but is, is which the in gi MMA gonna complement MMA though? Which is MMA basically. It's the nah, same nah, thing. No, 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 Bro, trust me when I tell you, a lot so of the you, same stuff that I do in the gi, okay. I do in no gi and it translates into MMA. All right. So if you in if and, you're, and, and and to be fair, when I'm doing the gi, I'm also only Doing things that I know will translate into MMA. All right, so, I'm not doing no fucking lasso and all that. I don't do them, none of that stuff. So if you're in MMA camp right now, yeah. are you doing gi jujitsu? Yes. No, you for what? I just told you it helps, oh, me, bro. I do. I, I disagree do with that. If I I'm in it. MMA camp, I'm sticking with my damn no gi. Bro, I, I feel like I do more. I mean, yeah, I do wrestling. We do wrestling twice a week. But I'm just saying, I'm not playing around with no damn gi. If I'm in. MMA camp. I hear you. Everybody got their own <laughs> preference. But personally. if it works for you, then yeah, 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 cool. Yeah, exactly, but, exactly. You know, but back to your question. So I got more into the no gi because not only because I was an MMA fighter, because it was just more fun. Like yeah. my style was just built more for no gi. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like I started, you know what's so funny? I always say when a beginner come to the gym, teach them freaking submission and they're going to be hooked. I think I got hooked to no gi because I started learning submissions. Yeah. More, more no gi submission. I was like, oh shit. Yo, I was never doing the damn darts in no damn gi. <laughs> I started doing the darts freaking neckties and no gi. Well, the submissions is a little bit different. Like you, you can do a darts in the gi, but it's kind of hard. But I'm saying we yeah. just, that that technique just never came across yeah, during yeah, yeah. in the gi class. So stuff like that was cool to me. I was excited to do a damn Darson, all that shit. So yeah, man, like no gi just made sense. I just started having more fun in no gi. Don't get me wrong. I still 
I still know how to grapple in the gi. I actually have a gi in my trunk right now. Oh. I carry that shit with me everywhere I go. You just never, like, back to the whole having your own car. You just never know what's going <laughs> to pop off. You might run into some gi guy. He's talking shit. To this day. You, gotta, you know, I started doing the same shit, but I started doing that in San Diego because I remember when I moved from D.C. to San Diego, when I first moved, there was no, I had I didn't have a home gym. Yeah. So I was running around traveling to different gyms. I just started keeping all my training gear in my car. I had a pair of gloves. I had my shin guards. I had my MMA gloves. And I had two gis and a set of no-gi clothes in the you car. Did, you did have a cereal bowl in your car, too. Right? I did have a cereal bowl. Yes, I did. Yes, I, I did. Think, <laughs> I didn't forget that one. <laughs> I did have the cereal bowl in my car with the feet up on the dashboard. Don't forget that. <laughs> yeah, we really didn't forget that one. <laughs> nah, the reason why I say that is because, you know, I used to go out places, like go to parties or meet up with friends or whatever. And people would be like, oh, yeah, we about to go train. I'm trying to go too. What's up? Let's go train. Right, right, right. And so if you got all your stuff with you, you don't got to be like, oh, I got to go home first and blah, 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 blah. No, let's go right now. Right. And that's the same mindset I have. I like have my own car because yeah. I like to be, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to talk about what made me go jujitsu 100%. So it was two, 2019, I had my first pro fight. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to keep it real. I got TKO. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's considered a knockout. I think it was TKO. <laughs> I don't know. I might, I might have took a nap. I might, I might have took a nap. I might have wake I'm up. I'm not going to lie to you. I remember when I watched it, I felt bad. I might have woke up in the referee's arms. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but let me say, though, for whoever never got knocked out or never got put to sleep, it's really not that bad. <laughs> what you mean it's not think that bad? Think about it. You don't feel shit. You wake up in somebody's arms. Did you have a headache? Nah. Nothing. I, I did have a headache. Okay. But it felt like a normal headache. Okay. All right. So it wasn't so bad. I woke up. The referee was there looking me in my eyes. I was happy to see him. I was happy to wake up and see somebody. It's better than waking up and not seeing nobody. <laughs> <laughs> they got you in a dumpster in the alleyway. <laughs> it wasn't so bad. I just want to point that out. Cause I know a lot of people always wonder what it feels like to get knocked knocked out. It wasn't so bad. So yeah, so that happens. And if you ever got knocked out, the rules is... I think it's like 40 days, no, no like 60 days. No striking yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So I'm like, shit, man, I need to train. So I'm like, all right, if I can't do no striking, let me just do all jujitsu then. So I was doing more jujitsu and I joined the jujitsu tournament. Actually, I joined that tournament a week after that fight, actually. Oh, wow. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And then I, I won the tournament. I did well. I did some submissions. I'm like, oh shit, competing is fun. Jujitsu tournament is fun. And I could do this every week. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. And then I just started doing more jujitsu, more tournaments, more, more, more. And then real talk, I fell in love with jujitsu. Mm. I fell in love with jujitsu and I never looked back to MMA again. So it wasn't I know, you, I know you I remember you thought about it a couple times though. You had a few times right. you thought about it. You know, like any other fighter, man, we have that itch sometimes. We wanna put the gloves back on. Because it's nothing could stimulate the feeling of tearing somebody apart on the ground, that ground and pound, that yeah. elbow strike. Nothing can replace that feeling. Nothing. Us as fighters, we 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 like violence. You know what I'm saying? We like that chaos. Mm -hmm. Jiu-Jitsu would never do that for you. So there's plenty of times I wanted to go back, but I just don't love it no more. I put on the gloves, I give it a shot. I'm just not excited to be doing it. And I know if I don't love it, I'm just going to be forcing it. And, and you if, might get hurt. Right. And if you yeah. forcing something, you're going to get your ass beat because you don't really want to be there. You yeah. want to do something else. Right, right. Have you met anybody that's an MMA fighter that in MMA context, the jiu-jitsu is very good, but then when you meet them in jiu-jitsu training on the mats, the jiu-jitsu is not that good? I'm around more jiu-jitsu people, mm -hmm. but however, I do know a lot of MMA guys that got good jiu-jitsu. We could talk about like some UFC guys. I mm -hmm. think Hamza, he got mm -hmm. good jiu-jitsu. And I know for sure he's not in no damn jiu-jitsu class five days a week. <laughs> no. But I think he... But he's also been wrestling... Right. I think his wrestling just complements everything else. And mm -hmm. he just probably a fast learner, probably natural with it. Mm -hmm. I could just watch him compete. I could see the things that he's good at. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's as far as it go. But the fact is, he found something he likes, something he's mm -hmm. good at, and he made it high level. And yeah. I think that's what competing is all about. We don't have to know everything. Yeah. But the, one, the things that we do know, we want to fine tune it and make it as dangerous as possible. Yeah. So yeah, I think there's lots of MMA guys that don't put focus on jujitsu, but got good grappling because they just study stuff and pay attention yeah. and know how to put it all together. You competed in combat jujitsu. Again, again, we just talked about that transition from MMA to jujitsu. How did that feel compared to MMA? Did you like it? Did you not like it? I, I liked it. I really liked it because it goes back to what I said before, how as fighters, we like the violence. We want to punish people. 
So I feel like combat jujitsu, you get a chance to do jujitsu that we love and sneak in a little bit of punishment. Mm -hmm. It's not the same as MMA, but you're still punishing. You could still you could still knock a person out with yeah, yeah, palm yeah. strikes or slaps. You could bust a person open, bloody face. So you still get a little bit of that feeling of if it was an actual MMA fight. Mm -hmm. I think you had two matches at that? Yeah, so I had two I had two matches that day. But I was surprised a lot because I thought I'd go in there, oh yeah, I got good jujitsu. That should be good enough. Mm -hmm. But no, 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 no. <laughs> I fucked up because I think to be really prepared for combat jiu-jitsu, you have to train like you train it for MMA fight. Because the cardio is not the same. It's not the same. Think about it. In jiu-jitsu, we have so many opportunities where we could rest. You don't get that in MMA. Combat <laughs> jiu-jitsu, you cannot rest, bro. No. You'd be on your back, somebody's raining down strikes. You'd be on top, somebody's trying to slap you off your they freaking back. So the cardio is way different. And the fact that we're moving so many body parts, our upper body so much, it takes more energy. Mm -hmm. Takes the energy to hold somebody, defend yeah, yourself. Your legs too, because you're trying to keep the person away from you so they not so they don't smack you or keep them close so they don't smack you. Right, and then the stress level. We go into jujitsu mm -hmm. feeling relaxed. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the worst that can happen? Submit me and I tap and it's over? Yeah. Combat jujitsu, there's <laughs> lots of worse that can happen. <laughs> Get your ass knocked out. <laughs> So it's it's much it's a much higher stress level. And I feel like when the stress is higher, your car you putting out more cardio, you more you tired faster because you're not relaxed, especially when it's your first event. It was my first combat jujitsu. So the stress level is very high. So yeah, I say anybody that's getting ready for a combat jujitsu match, I feel like train like you train a family MMA fight. Obviously, you don't gotta be on your feet doing a kickboxing, but yeah, yeah, yeah. prepare your upper body to be throwing strikes. Prepare yourself on your back to be blocking and, you know, sweeps while eating shots or whatever you do. Mm -hmm. You just got to prepare yourself. I definitely wasn't prepared well, but I made it through. I didn't get knocked out. I didn't wake up in the referee's <laughs> arms. I made it through. <laughs> you started your own jiu-jitsu promotion called Main Character Jiu-Jitsu out in uh, Austin, Texas. Yeah. Tell me, the, tell me the premise behind Main Character Jiu-Jitsu. So pretty much the way it all started was because I did a mock tournament, a mock 3v3 tournament in my gym just for fun for some YouTube content. Mm. Everything worked out so well. Like, everybody had such a good time. People was putting up money. We had money, like, whoever could do certain stuff, like, suplex their opponent or do certain submissions. Came out so well, man. Everybody had such a good time that I was talking to the um the owner of the gym, Curtis Hemroff, mm. about it. And he was just like, you should you should call it something. You should make this a thing. And I was like, can I? He was like, yeah, you should make this a thing. I was like, all right. And then I made a thing that we were just thinking of names. They were just telling me a whole bunch of silly names. Radar this, radar that. I'm like, I'm not going to name it radar nothing. Hell no. I want it to be a name that children could be a part of it. Parents would want to support it. Mm. Can't call no damn radar. <laughs> Parents thinking their kids is about to get slaughtered. <laughs> One day I was just thinking, I was like, main character. I want this promotion to be about, I don't care who's the best at jujitsu. I want us to be about who could cut a promo when we put the camera in front mm -hmm. of them. Who could be a fan favorite? Who could be a standout? So it's main character, because that's everything I'm trying to do in my life. Mm -hmm. I want to be a standout. I want to be a personality. I want when I have the camera on me, I flip the switch and turn up. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm looking for. So main character. So that's that's everything it means. Main character. Who's the main character? Who's standing up? I don't care how good your leg locks is. <laughs> you could be a good ass grapper and I put yeah. the fucking mic in front of you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need you. Get yeah. the fuck out of here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Give me somebody that I'm going to put the camera in front of. They can talk some shit. They can call somebody out. That's fucking content right there. I'm looking for content. There was a guy in wrestling. His name is Eric Bischoff. He wrote a book called something like Controversy Makes Cash, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a strong fucking statement. It is. People love controversy. They People do. love drama. Everything when it comes to social media, whether it's Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, any social media platform, when you use things and statements that are controversial, people want to click on. I disagree with this person and I want them to tell me why they think the way they think. 
because it makes me upset. So for me, you could be two blue belts, but you have a, a beef, a crazy backstory, you might just main event. Oh, wow. <laughs> so okay. we're going to build that shit. We're going to make yeah, a yeah, storyline. Yeah. That's what it's about. I want to make a storyline. I don't give a fuck what your rank is. Yeah, you could get eyes on you and make shit interesting. It's all about you. I'm going to invest in you. Wow, okay. Because it's all about main character. I want the main characters of this shit. I don't give a fuck what your fucking rear naked choke look like. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, man. So, But it makes it even better if they out here submitting everybody and they talking shit while doing it. Yes. Because then you end up like somebody like a Gordon Ryan who's running around saying anything he wants because nobody could beat him. Right. He's submitting everybody. Right, right. Yeah. So that's what it's about, man. Um, I'm gearing up for my second show November 12th in Austin, Texas. This time, I'm trying to do it bigger than ever, man. A lot of these promoters, they lack creativity. They think about it as like business. They're not, th they're not thinking about it from a creative standpoint. They lack creativity and they too money focused. They're too money hungry. Mm. Meanwhile, I'm thinking about investing, building. They don't give a fuck that you just booked a plane ticket. Now you got to get a hotel. Now you got to get a car. In. They don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But I give a fuck because I'm in the same position as these guys. I'm a fucking competitor also. Mm -hmm. So there's no way I could put somebody through something I don't want to put myself through. Yeah. <laughs> that's why my slogan is I want for you what I want for myself. Yeah. And I think that's what makes main character special because you have a promoter that's looking out for you. That's trying to take care of you. And, yeah. and on that, I created a system where fans, they could tip and donate to the mm -hmm. fighters. So it's a it's a QR code that we running so on they, the stream. So they like if they like somebody, they we can, run. Yup, we oh, running wow. on the stream throughout the whole show. Mm -hmm. We put on our social media. All they gotta do tip, however, and put in the subject the fighter's name. Oh wow! Think about it. I, it cost me nothing to do that. Right. And, and it all and if goes they entertaining to entertaining, and if they talk right. this shit and they do it, all go. It all goes wow. to the fighters. Why every promotion can't do this? Because they don't give a fuck. No, they just the money. <laughs> yeah, you're right. They don't give a fuck, bro. Right. Wow. They don't give a fuck. Think about it, man. You just spent fucking $400 to travel out to Austin, Texas. Now you just left Austin, Texas with $700 in tips. Yeah. One woman in my last show made at least over $700 in fucking tips. Wow. Think about it, man. Did she win? She didn't win. She won one match and lost in the, the quarters. Okay. But left for seven hundred thousand tips. Cause I appreciate anybody that book a damn plane ticket and come out to compete for me. That's a lot, man. I appreciate that. Where? What do you do for fun? What do you like to do for fun? Honestly, man, fun for me is like just traveling, road trip. But the funny thing is, my fun goes right back into training. Yeah. But even with me traveling, I'm gonna travel and get some training in. Some training. In. That's fun to me. But besides that, I like going to like. Lounges, bars here and there. Mm -hmm. I like doing some outdoor stuff. Basic. I'm sure, I'm sure when you at these lounges and bars and stuff, or even when you're traveling, you meeting some, you meeting some nice, some nice ladies while you out there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's part of the experience, man. That's part of the the traveling experience. Like, mm -hmm. especially you know when you're a semi well known person, people can see you, recognize you, and they're gonna, you know, yeah. It's part of it. When you go city to city, you got to make some friends. You know what I'm saying? You got to yeah. make friends in every city you go to. That's just part of the experience. So, yeah. <laughs> when you make... When you ain't making... You ain't making friends friends, though. These ain't friends friends, though. Don't... Don't... Don't try to act Everybody's like... Everybody's a fucking friend. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing a woman be saying. He's just a friend. Oh, Everybody's oh, a damn that, friend. Is that what it is? Okay, okay. <laughs> what I do want to talk about or ask about is how your experience has been dating within the martial arts community and or outside of it. I don't know how much time you got to date outside of the community, but what's been your your experience? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, check this out. I'm, I'm going to tell you a story. All right. First thing first, let me put it out there. Rule number one, do not fucking date in your gym. Oh, wow. Okay. Don't date in your gym. Don't date in the community. Don't date in the gym and don't date. Explain that. The surrounding gyms in your fucking In your area. area. Yeah. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. So I was dating this girl, right, with this woman. Me and her, we didn't train at the same gym. Mm -hmm. But peep this. Whenever we have an issue or a breakup, first thing she say to me is, don't be surprised if you see me with somebody from the community. I don't need your permission. I'm just saying. I'm like, <laughs> wait, What? Why do you need some? If you're gonna date somebody, date them. But that's how they mess with you. Yeah. Now they got. Now she got me thinking. Like, wow, you trying to mess with me now? So. This is how they. This is how they mess with you. Cause now they, 
in your circle, they're trying to mess with your peace. They know that training is our peace. This is how they mess with you. Don't be surprised, blah, blah, blah. This is how they mess with you. Did she, did she ever pop up with another dude from the community? She didn't, but she drove me crazy with me playing the guessing game, though. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and, that, and that will drive you crazy. Right, and I don't fucking need that. <laughs> I don't fucking <laughs> need that. And that only happens when you dating a woman that's so deep into the things that bring you peace, mm -hmm. like your training. Yeah. And then I'm going to tell you another story. This one is crazy, right? This one got me really mad. So I date this chick, a chick that nobody knows. She didn't do no jujitsu, no nothing. She don't train. She was a college girl. Okay. <laughs> I <laughs> bore her into my world. That's your fault. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> you already know I'm going to tell you that. Hold on. I brought her into my world. I brought her into the gym. I introduced her to the coaches. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I get her to start training. She liked that. She started doing it because of me. Mm -hmm. Soon as we break up, now I'm hearing rumors about her hooking up with teammates Ooh. and doing arguments. Oh, that's why I fucked your friend. Oh, <laughs> you felt oh. that one, huh? You felt that one, huh? Oh. You feel me? This is what women want to do. They they looking for weapons. They want to hurt us. Yeah. And every not, I don't think all women, but not, all, not all women. Not all women. Yeah, and they women. know the best way to hurt us is to tell us something about our friends. It's it's it's, it's just bad, man. <laughs> then I go to tournaments. Tell you, this girl never did shit in her life when it comes to competing. Now she's competing. I go to a tournament. She's at the same tournament I'm at. I'm seeing her talking to dudes and shit. It's just a lot of shit that we don't need, bro. <laughs> you feel me? This is good. While you was dating her or after? After. Yeah. But still, we're, you know, the breakup's still fresh. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it's not, while it was fresh. Yeah. Right. Okay. So now I got to see you with these other fucking fighters now. Now it's in my head. That's why I fucked your friends. <laughs> That's all I was repeating in my head. I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm, bro, I'm trying to enjoy my damn day. All I keep hearing is, that's where I fuck your friends. You feel me? And who knows? Maybe she didn't fuck my friends. But the, it's the mental warfare, bro. Did you ask your friends? I didn't know who the friends was. <laughs> she didn't tell you. Exactly. So now I don't know. <laughs> she didn't tell you. Nah. That's bro. funny as hell. Oh, so my that's God. That's the mental warfare they play. So that's why I say, honestly, not even because of that. Let's say none of that crazy stuff happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other side of it is now you and your girl broke up. It's a bad breakup. Now y'all got to see each other in the gym. Now somebody got to get the fuck out. Somebody got to leave. Somebody always got to leave. Somebody always got to leave. And if nobody leaves, it's going to be it's gonna be weird. You know what I'm saying? That mm -hmm. that the owner can get involved. Yep. That's always how it is. And you don't want to ever be in that situation where this is your home gym nope. just and because you leave. some new chick comes in and she started some shit. Now it's just a lot of drama. Everybody's looking at you differently. She's talking about your back. All the females is joining up. Listen to her. <laughs> oh, speaking of that. Uh -oh. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. So that, so that same ex I was talking about, you know what she did? She turned all my friends against me, like all my other teammates, like the oh. female ones. Oh, You know how it is, man. They start man. talking. Oh, he yeah. did this. He did that. Now all of a sudden, people that was my friends, now they hate me now. Yeah. See, I, I've also experienced this. Yes. <laughs> Stuff like that we don't need, man. And I get it, man. When you're in the gym, it's so easy to connect with somebody that's doing the same thing as you, right? Yeah. But you got to think about the other side of it, man. Mm hmm And at the same time, you could meet the love of your life in the gym, which I'm sure I mean, happens really, to lots of people. Nah. I mean, no, yes. No, no, it, it yeah, can't it happen. It does. It does happen. But no. You got to... You got to... <laughs> you got to... Look, man, I say this to everybody. And I told you this before. You know I told your ass this before. Leave these girls in the gym alone. I'm going to tell y'all in the in, that's watching this right now. <laughs> Leave these girls in the gyms that you train at alone. And then the add to that is what Kamoy said, which is don't mess with none of the girls in the community either. They will come to your gym and start talking to your friends and the people that you train with and you're not going to like it. It's bad, man. It's bad, bro. And don't get me wrong. Ladies, if you watching this, I don't want to make it seem like it's all on you guys. You guys doing all this shit. Men do... Oh, fuck yeah, shit yeah, yeah. too. Men do be doing some. You know what I'm saying? Maybe break it with a guy. They go fuck your best friend, your teammate. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they start some kind of men. Let me put out there. Men do the fuck shit also. It's not just 
Yeah. We're not just the victims. We, you know, as humans, we all shitty ass people. Let's yep. just put it out there. Like that. <laughs> yes. We all shitty. Yeah. See, it's even. We all <laughs> shitty. <laughs> but that's why you do everything you can to avoid these situations. Exactly. And once again, I know it's hard sometimes. It's fucking hard. You got to look. Like it used to be. It used to be hard. When you, I mean, I'm saying this now as a 32 year old man, mm -hmm. but I feel like when I was younger, it might have been more difficult, but. Now it's like, bro, I don't need... I, I. But it, it's easy for you to say that. You already experienced it all already. Oh, yeah, you know true. better at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely know better at this you point. You know what I'm saying? And I try to tell everybody else what to do and not to do. So that's actually going to segue right into my next question. Aside from the... I mean, we can start with that. But what are some do's and don'ts of being in the gym with the opposite sex? From a man and a woman's perspective. Don't date in your damn gym. Yep. As a fucking coach... Don't date your fucking students. Uh, can you repeat that one more time, sir? As a fucking coach, do not date your fucking students. Thank you. Go ahead. Once again, I know it's hard. I know we got these little baddie white belts running around, <laughs> shaking that little bubble butt. I know, bro. I know. I know. <laughs> it's hard, bro. They want to hang out. They want to go watch fights. They want to hang out after the fights. I know, bro. <laughs> we drunk. Hey, just keep it between us. I get it, bro. I get it. But don't do it. It's only gonna screw you over in the long, especially if you care about your career. Yes. Especially if you're not the owner, you're an employee. I mean, Ooh, you fuck we, shit up. You, you could get, you get fired. You could lose your job. Yep. Cause that owner gonna care more about the students that you know, the members. Mm -hmm. I'm keeping it real with you guys, man. We not angels out here. Us men, we not angels. It's hard sometimes. These little white bells running around the little bubble butts and short shorts. <laughs> <laughs> We get it. We get it, man. We man, we fucking savages. We primals. We get it. But you have to use everything in your power to keep it professional because it's only going to benefit you in the long run. Absolutely. Well, you got any dues? When it comes to like relationships or just in general in the gym? In general in the gym. Yeah, man. Be a fucking leader. Do mm. be a leader, bro. Like I, I see too many coaches that just think about themselves, man. It's kind of sad when you see competitors go to tournaments by themselves mm. looking around. For their fucking coach, I said what they was gonna be there. Not say no names, Mike Diaz, but <laughs> you know you got you got you got these competitors go to these tournaments by themselves, looking around for their coaches, like mm. calling, looking like remember that meme with the African guy with the phone <laughs> calling. We don't know who he's calling, but it was a yeah. funny meme. Yeah, please be there for your students, man, because those students will always remember that man. They're gonna be by your side no matter what. Absolutely. You could leave your gym and they can follow you, bro. Yep. Students will be loyal if you dare for them. Yep. Be there for your students. Because some students really need that, you know what I'm saying? They do. And then you got other students that don't need that. Yeah, they, they don't yeah, give a yeah, fuck. Yeah, yeah. For the ones that need it, like, please be there for your students because that's super important. You know, something that I want to talk about too. But a lot of people have an issue with some of the rules that a lot of gyms have. And it's not just jiu-jitsu gyms, but just martial arts gyms in general. And I think some rules are good because we need to have respect and discipline. But then I think some rules are just like, what the fuck are we doing? I'll start off with one and then you can go. I think the dumbest rule that any gym could employ is that you can't train at another gym. You can't cross train at another gym. And then if you do, they call you a trader. They say this and they say that. If you want to go cross train because one of your friends trains at another gym and you want to go train with them, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't. If there's an open mat, I don't think there's any reason why you shouldn't be allowed to go to this open mat or go do to this training over here. But... That's my opinion. So, what what about you? I don't really like those gyms that force you to wear certain things. Force you to wear... I used to be like that. Sorry. I used to be like that. Well, you used to like it or no? No, like I used it? to hate it. But I understand it now. From from a business standpoint. Because... Right, but hold on, hold on. You understand right. from a business standpoint, but if... Your students are paying fucking member. Why, the, why are you telling me what to wear? Think about it this way. And this is the reason why I say it's it's a business decision. For example, I've trained at two gyms now that have enforced this rule. Alliance recently uh, enforced that rule before I left, where you have to have an Alliance patch on your gi. So they're not telling you what gi to wear. They're not telling you what color gi to wear. They're just telling you whatever gi you wear, whoever you're sponsored by, it doesn't matter. But you have to have an Alliance patch on your gi, which I don't have a problem with. I think that's fine because you are representing my gym. So you should represent my gym if you're actually representing my gym, especially for the competitors who ain't paying no fucking money. So that's, that's I'm going to leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Then I recently started training at Gracie University. They have that same policy where you have to wear a white gi and it has to either have no patches or anything like that on it or it has to be a Gracie University 
Gee. And I'm going to tell you why I understand it. Number one, marketing. Number two, when you take pictures, it looks uniform and it looks like a professional gym. Because think about this. Now, no shade to 10 Planet. I'm not talking shit to 10 Planet. I'm just saying. <laughs> when you go to a 10 Planet gym, you got dudes in there with with tie-dye. <laughs> you, you got dudes in there with camo. You got dudes in there with, with long spats without no underwear dick out. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you got dudes that got short shorts on. You got dudes that got tank top rash guards, long sleeve, short sleeve, all different kinds of colors and all kinds of stuff. When it comes time to take pictures, when it comes, you got dudes that come in with basketball shorts and all kinds of stuff, right? So if a, if someone that doesn't know anything about jujitsu and doesn't know anything about the martial arts walks into your gym, it doesn't. And I'm not saying that it doesn't look professional but to the untrained eye someone that doesn't understand they're going to come in and be like oh people are just wearing whatever they want to wear this kind of just looks interesting but if you go to a uh, art of jiu-jitsu if you go to autos if you go to uh, uh, uh grace university um alliance any of these gyms they have these rules enforced so that it looks professional and i for one can appreciate that because i like the aesthetic of a gym to look professional <laughs> to have an all white or having a certain standard for the kind of clothes that you wear. Yeah, no doubt. I'm all about looking uniform, but the thought of forcing somebody to do that is kind of weird, you know what I'm saying? You should create the culture, make your guys want to do it. Don't just... What do you mean make them want to do it? How would you make them want to do it? For example, let's say you just start at a gym. Hey guys, on such and such days, we wear all white geese or... Hey guys, like when somebody first start, hey, the uniform here is white geese. Mm -hmm. That's creating the culture versus if you're not wearing this, you're not representing my gym. No, they don't say that. They just tell you. This, I don't know. I, I don't know. When at Alliance and 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 Gracie University, they never said that to me. They it, when Johnny at Alliance implemented that, it was, hey guys, starting on this date, everybody has to have an Alliance patch on their gi. Cool, no problem. When I walked into Gracie University, they said only white gis, and it has to be either blank or Gracie University. They never was like, you need to represent us and blah, blah, blah. That's not, that's not, it's not, you know, it's not like that. I mean, I just still, just the whole forcing someone to do something like that still feel kind of annoying, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it takes away the art from martial arts because... You think so? Yeah, some people want to express themselves how they want to express themselves. What it takes if you away wanna, the expression. What if it. you want to wear a tie-dye gi, gi? Come on, dog. Now, think about this. Everybody in your gym got on... Blue, white, and black geese, and you got this one motherfucker in the back. Right, tie -dye. and that goes back to creating a culture. Now you have all the students doing that. Now you know you got to get in line and get with the program. So again, versus, versus being forced, now you're doing that on your own because now you're standing out looking like a fucking clown. Or the opposite will happen. Everybody else sees this dude wearing tie-dye, and they're like, oh, I want to wear a cool color gi too. Next thing you know, they come in with an army gi. That's art. Next, That's art. People I, I hear you. Themselves. I hear you, but personally... <coughs> If I'm being real with you, I think that that should be that should be reserved for things like open mats, competing, shit like that. Going to train at somebody else's gym, you traveling somewhere, you want to go to another gym, whatever, cool, do that. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I only wear two colors of gear anyway, black and white, so it, is, it doesn't matter. Like I said, I'm not a, I'm not against being uniform. I just don't like the whole forcing. Yeah, let me. I'll, actually, I want to know how you feel about this. Because I feel like this is the traditional martial artist in me from when I when I started. But I feel like people don't when they they don't respect the mat when they step on the mat. What do you mean respect the mat? So number one, if you come to practice late, this is this this shit right here. I will knock somebody the fuck out for <laughs> it. It pisses me off. I get mad about it when I'm at when I'm at Black House because people do this shit all the time. If you're late to practice, how fucking dare you just walk on the mat and jump in class? <clears throat> how dare you? You don't walk up to the instructor and shake his hand. You don't apologize for showing up late. You just walk on the mat and go find a partner and not say nothing to nobody. That's crazy. Uh, I agree with that. Me and Keenan Cornelius, we were just talking about that yesterday. We was yeah. talking about um, certain etiquettes. I feel like Etiquette. there you go. Yeah, martial arts is going away from the etiquette and the tradition. Yeah. Um, but I don't feel like it's every gym though. I feel like those Brazilian gi gyms they still. Still following those oh, yeah, etiquettes yeah, yeah. and traditions. Sure. I think it's like the no gi settings that's getting crazy mm. and disrespectful. <clears throat> I'm not a big fan of the whole showing up late and just doing your thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a big fan of classes going on and you on the side fucking Bullshit. fucking off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that was always weird to me. I didn't I didn't grow up like that. And I was talking to um 
J Flow, Justin Flores about that tour. And I just realized me and J Flow, we kind of came from the same background with that. Just the way how we came up with mm-hmm. the, you know, the respect and all that. Cause think about it. Growing up in wrestling, ain't no such thing as coming to practice late. How could you? It's right after school. Where the fuck you at? Yeah. <laughs> where, where else can you be? Right, right. Ain't no such You can't even miss practice, yo. Right. And if anything anything do come up, you have to communicate with your coach. Yeah. It's just a part of it, man. Yeah. So I feel like me and, and other wrestlers, we came up with that and we have that mindset and we, you know what I'm saying? But then we have these... New grapplers and MMA and Muay Thai. It's all about yeah. That new, the, the, the new, new the new yeah. martial artists, like especially like I said in the nogi setting, when you're not in one of those traditional settings, like they just you know the etiquette and all that shit just going away. Like mm. I don't know what we could do about it because it's not a one man thing. Like nah, it's a culture thing. You know, yes, you have to build our culture. Yeah, because there's no reason why you should have two teenagers on the side of the mats giving a fucking private to each other. Like what? You a All kid? Get your on? ass in class! Yeah, that's crazy. Why is that happening? I seen that shit and I was shocked. I usually don't care what I see, but I was shocked. I had to ask about. It. I'm like, yo, what's what going, is on? going on? Yeah. <laughs> as a as a competitor in jujitsu, I'm sure you've seen how big jujitsu is getting right now. As far as like the the different kinds of events, ADCC is having more events in the United States. Their ADCC event is huge. Obviously, they did it in where the last one was in Vegas, right? The most recent one? Yeah. It was in Arizona. Oh, was in, no, 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 no. The big tournament. Oh, the, the one, Worlds. Yeah, That yeah, was yeah. in Vegas. That was in Vegas, yeah. You went to that, right? It's so funny. I wasn't even going to go because I was thinking on negative. Like, ah, I'm not even going to be able to see nothing. I'll be better off watching it on flow. I'll be able to hear the commentary. Bro, I was so happy I went, man. Wow. It's like, I don't know how to explain it. It's like, it's the Super Bowl of Jiu-Jitsu. It's, mm. it's where you want to be, man. Like, if you're a fan, you should be there, man. Yeah. The same way how motherfuckers save enough for a Taylor Swift concert, a Beyonce <laughs> concert. Yeah. You need to be at ADCC every okay. fucking two years, it happens. So with all these big tournaments happening, and then obviously the UFC doing these Invitation. invitationals now, yeah. how do you feel about the state of jiu-jitsu, number one? And then two, I think jiu-jitsu becoming more mainstream. To be really, really honest, I see a lot of platforms that's really trying to really push it. But I feel like it's not really moving. Like, it's stuck where it's at. Why you say that? Because we got one championship. They putting on grappling now. Yeah. But who else cares about that besides the people that does it? What they want to do is when they say mainstream, they want it to be to a point where we gain new fans, people that don't even know what jujitsu is. Kind of like how MMA. Right. Right, right, right. I don't... That's going to be hard to do. And it's mainly because... Jiu-Jitsu is not that exciting of a sport like MMA. I disagree. Boxing is... The reason why I say I disagree is only because of it's the rule set that makes it exciting or not exciting. I think the ADCC style rule set where you can't do this pulling guard bullshit, you have to wrestle, and you can't just stall out and and sit in positions. You really got to go for it. Like all those matches that we watched that that ADCC Worlds, all that shit was exciting. All right, but answer this question. Yeah. If a stranger walk into a bar, mm-hmm. we got jujitsu on one TV, we got boxing on another TV. Oh, they're going to watch boxing. All exactly. Day. Yeah. It's easier to understand boxing because you right. see one person getting punched in the face, right. punching another person in the face. Right. And the thing about jujitsu is it's not always fireworks, man. That's true. It's only a matter of time until you get bored of motherfuckers sitting on their ass butt scooting. <laughs> and what can you do about that? It's not a rule set thing. Motherfuckers always gonna find a way to be on their ass butt scooting. <laughs> they can find a way to hold somebody in their clothes guard and hold that shit for their life. In my opinion, it's never gonna get to where people think it's gonna get to or want it to get to because it's just not that exciting for a person I don't know shit about jujitsu to watch. Mm-hmm. The people, the fans that we are gonna draw in is fans that probably watch MMA or fans that probably but that's a lot of people. If you really think about it, there's a lot of people that watch MMA. So they they their gateway might be MMA, and then through MMA, they'll learn more about wrestling because of people like Bo Nickel and and Daniel Cormier and some of these other guys who come from wrestling, and then they'll learn about kickboxing and some of these other things because of guys like Izzy. And, and other people. And then I think they'll learn about jiu-jitsu from some jiu-jitsu guys who might go over, like a Damian Maya or somebody that will go in. Now, it's not going to be a one-for-one. One. Like, everybody that's into MMA is also going to be into jiu-jitsu. I think it takes a special kind of person to understand, that, to want to understand what jiu-jitsu is. Right, but what I'm saying, I think the, the ultimate goal is to get strangers into this shit. It's not, I don't think that's going to happen. 
that's what I'm trying to say. I think, but I think that's the ultimate goal, though. <sighs> that doesn't make sense. Think about it. Think about it. Conor McGregor, mm-hmm. he's a superstar now. People that don't even know shit about fucking MMA, they know, know Conor McGregor. Yes. And I think that's where jujitsu want to go. People that don't even know shit about martial arts, they want people people like that to watch. Yeah, jiu-jitsu. but that's only gonna work for like one person, right? Like a Gordon Ryan, right? And, and a lot of people know who Gordon Ryan is, but right? Do they know anybody else, right? And that's what I'm saying. I just feel like due to the fact of what the sport is, it's never gonna go that far. I, I just I just feel like that. Cause I'm telling you right now, put on boxing, put on jujitsu. Nobody's looking at jujitsu. <laughs> yeah. Unless boxing, something crazy happens, like somebody's arm get broken or some crazy shit. Right, but you got to watch it long enough to see the buildup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's too much going on in boxing that stimulates our mind because too much similarities to real life shit. Yeah, yeah. People want to see real life fighting because now we're going to think in our head, oh shit, like this could happen to me on the streets. Nobody's going to look at jujitsu and be like, what would I do if I'm on a... You know what I'm saying? Yeah, People yeah, yeah. just gravitate more to real fighting. Yeah, man. I mean, like I said, I'm, me personally as a competitor, I'm happy where jujitsu is at. But it's bigger than it's ever been. Everybody mindset is, is going to reach to this point where we all making money. We not all going to be making money. Even if this should go mainstream, who you think making money? Gordon Ryan's making money. Gordon Ryan's team's making money. So who mainstream jujitsu? Who's that really benefiting though? That's benefiting a small group of guys. But let me ask you this. Is that because they're not acting like a main character? Because Gordon Ryan's acting like a main character. Nicholas uh, Marigali's acting like a main character. Nicky Rod and all those other guys are acting like main characters. What's his name? Uh, Australian dude. Craig Jones. Craig Jones is acting like a main character. So to your point about the the whole main character and the reason why you started that promotion is because you're looking for people who can bring those eyes and that to the sport, to the but, promotion. But peep this though. Yeah. There's main characters out there that would never get the opportunity to show that, show that they're main character. Because mm. these promoters not even looking their way. They First place they can look is who Gordon got, what, what Gordon team got, what Craig Jones team got. Who these guys, these UFC fighters got? I would say 1FC is giving people that chance. Are they really? Because. Who they gave that chance to? So the guys that Mikey Musumeci, that Ty Rotolo, that Cade Rotolo. Those are the those are the 1% dudes. No, but, but listen to what I'm saying to you. The people that they're competing against is the people that they're giving the chances to. No, those Guys are... that have won worlds in IBJJF. No. Those guys are getting flown out to one to compete with those guys. Look, so, look, you, look. so I'm not saying that it's everybody. Obviously, it's a small pool of people, right? Right. But what I'm saying is there are people that are given those chances. Think about it. all the guys that Mikey fought, all the guys that the Rotolo fought. It's, it's probably dudes I saw on their roster, MMA fighters on their roster. No, I'm telling you, it's dudes from jiu-jitsu that have won worlds in IBJJF, and they're calling them over to come compete with them. <clears throat> well, they haven't did it enough yet. I see, I see one or two guys that went over there to face those guys. One or two guys, and those are guys that's part of the 1% dudes that's probably top in their country. Yeah. One or two guys, but it's still not enough to say, all right, we going somewhere right now. Let me tell you what could happen now that would make me say we going somewhere right now. Okay. Let's say one do a fucking tournament mm-hmm. and do a tournament that do like a qualifier mm-hmm. to even get into a tournament. Mm-hmm. And with a qualifier, open qualifier, that means then anybody everybody. could join. So any random dude that got the skills could win it, now they on one FC competing. That's giving opportunities. So is that is that what the ADCC Opens are doing? I don't think so. I think ADCC Open is just... Yes. How, is the, how is the Open different from the qualifiers? The qualifiers get trials. you a direct spot. Trials. Or if you trials, win I mean. trials or even place top two, you could get an invite. If you win, you in. I mean, don't get me wrong. You do well in the Opens. There's gonna be some eyes on you some eyes but at the end of the day people really care about trials Mm. because look we just had our most recent open in arizona Mm -hmm. people won but by monday we're not talking about it no more Mm -hmm. it's supposed to be so big right why we not talking about it why we not giving these guys that one open shine why they not in the conversation the same thing in ibjf no the fuck is not you win nogi worlds that's nogi worlds though Dogey but, worlds, but they trying to worlds. spin. They trying to spin these opens like every open is is worlds. That's how they trying to oh, play. Oh, I see. Because in my opinion, Nogi worlds and and Gi worlds is the com- is the comparison to ADCC worlds. Right? Nah, nah, you can't. You can't. I mean, yeah, you in, can't in, in, in 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 the in the in what it means in the jiu jitsu community. Yeah, right? what it means. Like, yeah. But it doesn't hold the same weight though. You don't think so? Fuck yo, fuck ADCC. You no. think ADCC holds way more weight than anything, bro? ADCC Worlds is the fucking Super Bowl of Jiu Jitsu. Okay. I'm not disagreeing with you. 
It I'm does just, not I'm just hold the same weight. It does yeah. not. But the point I'm trying to make is you win these tournaments by Monday. Okay, let's think. Let's start talking about the next tournament. We trying to go mainstream, but we only talking about specific people. Mm-hmm. If fucking Gordon Ryan does an ADCC Open, wins it. We going to be talking about Gordon Ryan all week. We going to be showing highlights of his shit. Yeah. So you can't say you want to push the tournament, to push the, the sport, but you only want to push certain individuals. Well, then let me ask you this. When it comes to MMA, there's like three or four main outlets, right? You got MMA fighting, MMA junkie. You go to the UFC page, they post, a, you know, who who's doing what in the fights. And podcasts. Sure. And it's the a, podcast. There's a whole right? week thing, a whole week conversation going on. Okay. Where is that for jiu-jitsu? Do they have news? I'm going to be real with you. I don't read no, no shit about jiu-jitsu when it comes to news. Because I, I don't know where it is. They don't have it, man. Uh, and the, the people that are supposed to have it is the ADCC. They're supposed to be using their platform to give those guys shine. Flow Grappling, they the one that stream it. They're supposed to use their platform to give those guys that shine. I don't even really be seeing nothing on Flow Grappling like that. But what I'm saying is, you cannot say you want to push something and once Monday comes... So let me ask you then, what is the solution? How do you push it? The solution is you got to push these guys that's going out there that's winning. Think about it. Let's but say, what does that push look like? That's my question. I'm going to tell you what the push look okay. like. You got to spend the whole week putting out highlights. Let's say your focus is MMA, yeah. but you follow Flow Grappling or ADCC page. But every week, you just hearing a conversation about such and such. Eventually, that person can be a household name in your head because like, oh shit, like, I just keep hearing about this dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is how you push the fucking sport. You like, how, like how IBJJF pushes Felipe Andrew all the time. They post about him. He's the number one. This, he's the no- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Use the, use the platform and talk about these guys that's winning. Okay. I'm going to show you something right now. I'm okay. Gonna go- I'm going to go on my phone. I'm going to go to the ADCC page. Okay. We on the ADCC page. I'm going to tell you right. Today's what? Wednesday? No, Tuesday. today's Tuesday. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what they talking about right now. What they post from the tournament. <laughs> Benson Henderson. A yeah, pop he, MMA fighter. Yes. Big Dan. Gordon Ryan teammate. Okay. I don't know who that is. Gordon Ryan and John Jones training. I saw that. More ADCC um promotion for other events. Yeah. So you just had a whole fucking tournament. All these motherfuckers won. We got so much content of all these other guys winning. Why are we not promoting these guys? Okay. I see your point. Yes. Who gonna remember if the fucking platform ain't talking about it? And this is why I think it's never gonna go mainstream because there's too much focus on the people that's already established. Mm. Then I put in the time into to building. building the next star. Anyway, we'll we'll move past that. I want to talk to you about some stuff that's going on in the real world, not the not the martial arts world, our little community. <laughs> yeah. We we got word that Tory Lanez <laughs> got 10 fucking years for shooting at Meg the Stallion. I want to hear your opinion on this, sir. Tory Lanez is one of my favorite um artists right now. I feel like he's a good artist, man. The man could rap, the man could sing. If I'm chilling with a shorty, we might just have Tory Lanez on shuffle. You know what I'm saying? I'm a big Tory Lanez fan, so it's kind of it's kind of sad for me to see him go out like that. However, at some point we gotta learn, especially as black men, man. Yeah. When you no, let me not say this other part. Especially, <laughs> especially as black men, when you're dealing with certain women, we all know that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what you was gonna say. Yeah, I didn't say That's that. What you was yeah, I didn't say that. Especially as black men, when you're dealing with certain women, especially the ones that you know could bring the worst out of you. I think all of us, we already know the woman that could bring the worst out of Absolutely. us. Absolutely. You got to take it upon yourself to separate yourself from that. Because mm-hmm. so much stuff could happen, bro. Especially when alcohol is involved. Not just any alcohol, Hennessy. Wow. They, they had Henny? They <laughs> what the fuck? They had Henny? <laughs> Are you, they had Henny for real? When the Henny's involved, bro. Oh, man. And it's bad, man. And I get it. Sometimes when you're in the heat of the moment, you're not really thinking too logical. Because we could easily point our fingers on Tory. He did this. But we all heard about the lead up, the fighting in the car and yeah, all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. The moment a woman start getting aggressive like that, leave. Yeah, you Separate gotta, you your gotta, fucking you self. Walk away. You got to walk away. And I hear dudes, you know, on, on the social media these days talking about, as a man, we know to not hit another dude because what's going to happen? The dude going to hit you back, Right. But for some reason, women don't understand, don't hit a dude because a dude might hit you back because we've been told to not hit women. <laughs> I'm still on the side of just don't do it because n- nothing good is going to come of you putting your hands on a woman, I th- ever. I think everybody should just keep their fucking hands to themselves. <laughs> I Problem agree. solved. I agree with you. But what I'm saying is, as a dude, you already know you're never going to win. 
It doesn't matter what the girl did. You're never going to win. Oh, yeah. Just walk the fuck away. It don't matter if she smack you. It don't matter if she... Unless she got a knife and she's ready to stab you, that's the only time you can start swinging. Before that, <laughs> before that, walk the fuck away. <laughs> Run away, as a matter of fact. Yo, I wouldn't even be surprised. It'd probably be some woman that would say, even if she do have a knife, nah, she nah, nah, no nah, right nah. to... Because now my life is in danger. <laughs> now my I life is in there's danger. some woman that would say that, though. You got a weapon. Come on. You, you can't no say right that. You no right to put your hands on the woman. <laughs> So if a girl got a gun, same thing, huh? You got to wrestle it out of her hand. <laughs> yeah, no rights. You got to restrain wild. her. Yeah, you think, man. You think 10 years is a long time? You think that's a, you think that's that time was justified for what happened? Nah, bro. I, I don't think so. Because one, nobody got killed or even close to getting killed. So it wasn't even like it was a, oh, yeah, he was trying to take her life. Well, they that's they could say that, though, because he had a gun and he shot at her in her direction. So you could say it. Yeah, but he her. was aiming at her feet while saying, First of all, dance, bitch, dance. <laughs> I believe he said that shit, though. I remember when we first heard yeah. that shit. I really believe when I first heard, I was like, "Nah, the internet is trolling." <laughs> but I believe that motherfucker said that because other people in court said it too. I know, like the witnesses said that shit too, and that's what the Hennessy do to you, man. Makes you say all type of funny shit. <laughs> dance, bitch. <dance. laughs> that's a harsh punishment for him. I don't know, man. He got to take that L. It's a, it's a harsh punishment. I feel like ten years is kind of beast. If it was five years, I'd be like, oh, "Yeah, he." Run through that quickly. I think five to seven would have been. Nah, not even seven. Seven is too close to ten. <laughs> seven sounds no different than ten. <laughs> a little five years, you know what I'm saying? But this is a big lesson for a lot of men out there, man. Absolutely. You Absolutely. have to separate yourself from these women that would bring you out of character. Yep. So speaking of uh, Meg Thee Stallion and Tory Lanez, how's your dating life right now? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I'm at I'm I'm at the stage of my life where I'm kind of picky, but not too picky. I'm I'm losing faith in this generation of women, at least in America. Okay, tell me more about. A that. lot of these women, they coming out with these bad habits. Like they got this mindset, like you're the man, you should be paying everything. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't understand. I, I never understood that mindset. I feel like as a woman, you let the man volunteer to take care of shit. Yeah. Don't step out with no fucking expectation. Because now when you do that, now I lost my wallet. So now you got <laughs> you got to pay everything. Yeah. And I, I just feel like that's, that's a crazy mindset to me. Yeah. Because... Well, you supposed to work your job, save your money, and not spend all my shit. That's that's what they believe. Now I'm yeah. broke. That's how it goes. Yeah. That's what they say. So I'm not I'm not feeling that. Now I'm trying to stay away from a woman with that mindset because I'm more likely to hold it down and take care of you on my own mm -hmm. than you pushing it on me, telling me I'm supposed to. I 1,000% agree with that. That's just a very disrespectful mindset to me. And... And if you're like that, if you're a woman, you're like that, we're probably not going to work out. I uh, used to see this woman, and whenever we hang out, I always took care of everything because I wanted to. You feel me? One day, one time, I didn't take care of everything. Mm -hmm. you know what, what, was the, what was the circumstances for that? It was just it was just a bad month, you know what I'm saying, where I, I got some stuff coming up, and I'm just trying to save some money. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? I just wasn't in a position to really ball out that week. Right. You know what she said to me? She said, oh, I'm not used to that. This is below my standard. Below my standard? Hello. Oh. One time, every time I hung out with this chick, I took care of everything. Wow. Who's raising these fucking... Who's raising these ladies? <laughs> 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 that's wild to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's yeah. wild. You don't, you don't know what I got going on. I think that there's a, there's a large... I don't, I don't even want to say large because I don't think that it's a large group of women. I just think that there is a group of women that seem to think that men should pay for everything for them. And I think, if I'm being honest with you, I think there are some women that get that naturally because they are someone who should be paid for. And when I say that, this is what I mean. If you got a girl that's your girlfriend and she's supporting you, she's helping you with whatever you got going on, She's helping clean. She's helping cook for you. I'm not saying she's she's a maid or nothing like that, but she's helping you when she can. She's not doing it all the time, but she's showing you that she cares about what you're doing. She's trying to support you. She's literally saying verbally, I want to help support you. What can I do to help? When you have somebody that's trying to support you like that, that's your partner, that's your girl, 
when you making money, you going to want to spend it on her. That's what I'm saying. And that's why I said that it's, it depends on the person because that person should be spent on because they're showing you that they support you. <clears throat> I agree with that. But there's a lot of girls that just come out thinking that, oh, because I got a vagina, you need to be paying for everything for me. That's just the way it needs to be. And I don't have to do anything. I don't have to say anything. I have to provide no value to you. As a woman, as a human being, I have to provide no value and you should just pay for everything simply because I'm attractive. I don't feel like this is an issue that's ever going to get fixed. It's going to get fixed. No, I don't think so. Can, can I tell you why it's going to get why fixed? Why is that? Because those women, a lot of them, I'm not going to say all of them, because there are dudes out here that do just want to pay for shit. There's a lot of dudes like that too, who their only value is the money that they have. They're not actually, they're not smart. They don't know how to talk to people. They're not charismatic. They literally only have money and that's the only thing they can use. So there are guys like that that will do that simply because of that. I think what is going to stop that is when those same women that are using their looks and attractiveness to get money, to get things out of men in the way that we're talking about, when they get to a certain age and men don't want to fuck with them no more, and then they're single at 35, they're single at 40, and I hear a lot of people, men and women, saying, oh, I'm happy being single. <laughs> Again, I want to say this. Okay. Men and women, I'm not picking on just women right now. Men and women who say, I'm happy being single. No the fuck you're not. Nobody wants to be single. Nobody wants to be 50 years old and be alone. <laughs> Nobody see. wants to be 50 years old not having kids running around. And yes, there are some people that don't want to have kids, but I'm not talking about them because that's a small majority of people. Most people want to have a family. Most people want to have a wife or a husband. Most people want to have a family. And so for anybody that's around that age that doesn't have that, they're lying to you if they tell you that they're happy. And guess what's going to happen? These girls that are growing up are going to see these miserable ass men and women who said these same things and they're not going to want to be like them. But the issue is, <clears throat> the reason why I said it's not going to change. So let's say you got a woman that's 25 years old. Mm -hmm. She's getting everything taken care of for. Mm -hmm. Now she's 45. Mm -hmm. All that stops. Mm -hmm. And now she's facing the harsh reality. There's just going to be another baddie that's 25 years old. Uh, the cycle continues. There's always going to be somebody that's willing to be the simp. It's never yeah. going to... Somebody's always going to take that place. It's going to be a new baddie. It's going to be a new nerd that's ready to spend everything. Think about it. If dudes is paying hundreds of dollars for some fucking feet pictures... That's deep. Can we talk about this for a second? Because I, I still, it's, yo, I, it still, it blows my mind that there are dudes that literally take money out of their bank account and give it to a woman hmm. simply because she's showing ass or even worse, you're paying money for her OnlyFans and she's fucking, a, you're paying to watch her fuck another dude. That's wild to me, bro. Mm -hmm. Nah, ain't nothing more wild than paying a slick at somebody's foot. It you got your get... fetishes and whatever. People could do whatever they want to do with that. So you I don't understand care. the feet then, but you don't understand OnlyFans. I don't understand none of it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying. you don't understand the worst, though? Watching another woman get fucked. So you understand You're paying money pictures. to watch a woman that you think is beautiful. You lusting <laughs> after her, and you're paying $100 a month, $20 a month, however the fuck much it is, to watch her have sex with somebody else. Okay. Not you. Let me explain that. Though. I That's think I, crazy. I think I know where it came from. They formed this connection with the with the person. They able to have conversation. They formed this connection. And when they watch it, they trick their mind to think that's them. And then they start that's crazy. fucking beating their meat. And they they just they just form that connection. They switch off the man's face and put their face. It's no different than watching a porno. The only difference is. You feel like you, you personally know the person. You never watch a porno and put your face on the dude's face? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> no. You never did that? Nah. I do nah, it all the time, bro. bro. Nah. If I'm watching a porn, my face got to be on that dude's face. <laughs> <laughs> my First face of all, it's, be been, on... it's been years. Literally years is the last time I watched porn. But I want to say this, though. <laughs> I want to make this very clear. I'm not saying that this is the women's fault. It's not. It's our fault because they wouldn't be doing OnlyFans if motherfuckers wasn't paying. If dudes wasn't paying for it, they wouldn't they wouldn't be doing this to make money off of it. But we're so fucking degenerate <laughs> that we keep paying money to watch this. But you know what I think? I think society needs that though. Let me no, the fuck wait, let don't. me explain. Let me explain. Tell me. For hundreds of years, there's always been sex workers. OnlyFans just the evolution of it. Oh, but it's dude, just at, the least, evolution. at least if you're doing real sex work. 
And when I when I say real sex work, I mean like you're going to a strip right. club or you're going to a prostitute. Right. That makes sense to me. Right, but OnlyFans is the mental portion though. At least have somebody sucking your dick. God damn. If you're going to pay money, if this girl's going to take half your check every month and you're going to watch her have sex with somebody <laughs> else, why not pay $100 and go fuck a prostitute? Because OnlyFans is more convenient. You're in your crib. You're on your fucking phone under your sheets. Listen to me. <laughs> All right, we, we look at it like it's stupid, but... I try to keep an open mind and try to understand why and what dudes get out of it. I just would never understand the feet part. That's the only thing I would fucking get. <laughs> I just don't understand the fucking foot fetish. I would never get that part. I, I still, but do dudes see feet and imagine a fucking vagina between the toes? I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't no. get it. If you're watching this right I now, mean, look, please explain this feet fetish thing in the comments. Explain why it's such a thing. Explain why you want to pay $100 for somebody's toes, man. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Let's talk about it. <laughs> but I guess this is my thing. The part that I don't understand is if you're going to a prostitute or a strip club, right, Somebody's touching you. Physical pleasure, yeah. Right? Somebody, like, you're actually getting something out of it where you're being physically pleased by somebody else. Yes, you're paying for it. Whatever. I don't care. Pay for it. Right? That's somebody's job. Okay. You're paying them for it. The part that I'm not understanding is you're paying for someone's OnlyFans to watch, and you are not getting anything out of it. All right. What are you getting out of let, it when let, you watch somebody let, let else? Let me ask you this question. What's the difference between... You playing paintball and mm -hmm. you playing Call of Duty. One is physical and mm -hmm. the other one is like mental, right? Mental stimulation, right? Yes. I think that's what it is. Okay. You going yeah. to see a prostitute's physical. Yes. You watching porn or somebody's OnlyFans is the mental portion. That's we, a good we, point. We both, we, from both of them, we're still getting something. You getting something when you play paintball. Yes. You getting something when you play Call of Duty. But there's a difference. What's there's the pain. Difference? There's a negative association or a negative... Uh, feeling associated with paintball because you get shot and it hurts. Okay. Sure, it's not a bullet, but it still hurts. All right? right. Versus you playing Call of Duty, you get the 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 rush and the adrenaline of having your character run around and you shooting different things and you doing different things. You you get to feel like you're a soldier. You get to feel like the you're same doing thing for why somebody's watching somebody get. But fucked. this is real life. You can actually go fuck somebody and get. Actual pleasure. And you can also put the controller down and go play paintball. That's not pleasure, though. You <laughs> it see what is I'm saying? pleasure. Why not? Because you get shot. That's not pleasure. Some people if somebody like shoots that. you in your Some back. Some people like that rush and getting shot. Some people like it. Okay. And if you like, <laughs> if you like that rush of going out and getting negative emotion, pain. But why does it got to be negative? Because pain is a negative. Says who? What do you mean, says who? Why do pain got to be considered negative? That's the reality of human nature. Pain is a negative thing. Pleasure is a positive thing. All right, but playing paintball, you're not just getting pain out of it. No, you're not. You're not. But the point that I'm trying to make with that is there is some kind of physical interaction happening. Right. Where you're getting shot. Right. Right? And and you're doing something, but it's a negative thing. It's a painful thing. That's like anybody who would tell you, oh, I like to play fighting video games, but I don't want to go train. I don't want to go fight because I don't want what's associated with fighting, which right. is pain. Right. How many people you know will tell you, <clears throat> I don't want to have sex because I don't want the joy and pleasure that's involved with having sex. No one would tell you that. I don't think I don't think that's what it is, though. I think it's a convenience. It's a Pay hundred dollars, go down to the massage parlor. <laughs> I ain't racist. <laughs> but go get one of these little tie joints <laughs> to massage you up and give you a happy ending. Right, but can you do that at will though? Of course you can. I know dudes that do that at will. They will go on a random fucking Tuesday, Thursday. All right, but pay can they you little do money. that after closing hours. Of, I'm sure. No, you can. They, Why not? They, they closed. So so that equals you paying for this girl's rent. The convenience. Yeah, I'm sure they got prostitutes that do home visits, nigga. Like, I know they got that. All right, but a lot of guys not comfortable with that. Is the convenience. What are we Look, talking about? Look, everything in life, there's a <laughs> mental portion to everything. Okay. Some people might like the mental portion more than the physical portion for whatever strange reason. Everybody's strange. Humans is fucking strange ass people. I'm not saying that we don't all have our shit. I'm just saying it doesn't make sense to me. You know what I would understand? These fucking feet pictures, man. <laughs> How the hell you just paid $100 to look at somebody's toe? Yo, that person could literally Google some feet and send to you. When so these, the same way you don't get the feet is how I don't get When these guys overall. look at fucking foot, what do they see? Like, do they see something else? Like, <laughs> do they see something we don't see? I don't know. <laughs> do you think that we have been conditioned 
to like a woman's body. It's so funny. I always think about that because as a human, are we naturally going to like those things or back to what you said, are we mm. conditioned like those things? I, I always thought about that. I know that obviously we naturally are attracted. Most people are attracted to the opposite sex. Naturally. Naturally. So when we were kids, I'm sure when you was a kid, nobody had to tell you to like that girl. You saw a girl you thought was cute. And you liked her when you were a kid just because of her physical appearance, her face, right? As we got older, when we got into like, I'm sure probably like middle school towards high school when girls started to develop, we started seeing, oh, this girl got big ass titties. Oh, this girl got a nice butt. This girl got nice legs. This girl got nice whatever. I think you're right about that. Like, why do we like the woman body? I, I, this is something I just thought about. I remember when I was younger that somebody did say that as a man, we we have been more predispositioned to look at women that have those kind of features, like big breasts, like wide hips and big butts, because the big breast means food for the child. <laughs> and, the, and the wide hips mean, it's like, what do they say the for carrier, women? They call it childbearing yeah, hips, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, so they, I think maybe subconsciously that's why we're thinking about it. But in our mind, we're just thinking about it sexually. Like, oh, she got a nice butt. Yeah. She got a nice, you know what I'm sure saying? So nobody's looking at no chick and be like, yeah, she look like she could carry two big <laughs> hips. <laughs> why? She could carry some kids. And but, I, but I think primarily that's probably what it means. But we've programmed ourselves to think about it in a sexual way. You know what I you know what I also think it is? What? Me as a fucking kid, yeah. I was exposed to bro. Oh, I think all of us were. Right. That that's young where age. it starts. Yeah. Yeah. We seen that shit going on, fucking people fucking, we gonna wanna do the same thing because that's what we see. Yeah. And then naturally we start getting turned on. We wanna try it out mm -hmm. and then we realize this is a good thing. Yeah. We realize how it make us feel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it all starts with porn. For me, at least. I, I, I think, think a lot of dudes our age or the late night music videos with girls shaking their asses and doing the uh, BET Uncut. You remember that shit? Yeah, I remember that. What was that, what was that one video? The tip drill joint. That was Ooh. like the... <laughs> Bro. My man said, woo. Bro, man. That was like the one that set it off where they really started doing all kinds of crazy shit. Yeah, man. Ladies, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate them titties. <laughs> That that little bubble butt you bouncing around. We we appreciate it, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> we wanna be good to you guys, we wanna feed you guys, we wanna make you guys laugh. We we wanna do all these things for you guys, you know what I'm saying? We hope that you wanna do the same to us. <laughs> when they don't ask for it. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's women that ask for but ask for it in the right way. Please. <laughs> Tell the viewers. Tell the viewers what the right way ask is. Ask for it. But ask for it the right way. So back on that subject, if you're not following along, we don't like when females feel entitled, obligated for men to do this, do that, spend this, spend that. Ain't nothing wrong with asking for it, but mm. if you ask for it the right way, we might just deliver. If, how would you even? Ask, how would a girl even ask to ask, pay? Ask for uh, to pay for you to pay. I mean, how about this? Would you let a girl pay if she if she put her card down and was like like automatic? Didn't even think about it. Oh, let's split it. Would you Would you then say, okay, let's split it? Or would you be like, nah, actually, the fact that you decided you wanted to split this, I'm going to take care of it. Man, this is what you do. When a woman offers a pay, you fake pump. You pull out your car. Ah, are you sure? You fake pump. You make it seem like you wanted to take care of it. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're like, yes, you pay for that. <laughs> you pay for that. You got to fake it. You got to pull out your car and make it look like you was reaching for it and be like, you sure? <laughs> And they get if they're a real one, they can be like, yeah, I got it. That's that's only I think that's only ever happened to me like <laughs> maybe twice. I do remember you telling me some stories about I don't know where the check comes, now you gotta use the bathroom. Me? That was you that told me that, right? No. Yeah, you did. What? <laughs> <laughs> don't try to put this on me now. That wasn't you? No. Uh, I gotta use the bathroom. Why would I do that? That sounds like so you. You didn't have to pay. That sounds like you. You never I'm swear to God, I'm sure. Nah, you told bro, me. that was not me. Okay. I don't do that. There's been times where the bill has been paid and I didn't even know. I'm like, where's the check at? Well, you went to the bathroom. No, I didn't go to the bathroom. <laughs> How you didn't see the check being paid? Because they went to the bathroom. They went to the bathroom and they went to the server and was like, oh, I want to pay for this. Why would they go out there? way to do all that on the low? Because they like me. I'm a nice guy. But I'm saying, why did they have to sneak off to pay the because, bill? Because they probably know if they do this in front of me, I'm going to be like, no, I got it. And I'm going to enforce it and be like, no. But they actually really wanted to pay, so they didn't give me the option. Yo, you know what's impressive? What's that? I've been around some females where you got to fight them to pay that shit. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's a battle, and that is it's impressive, yo. Like, that's such a... I've been around some chicks like that. And one thing they all had in common is 
there was bosses. There was like mm. executive checks. And that's fair. I feel like if you in a position, you well paid, mm. it doesn't hurt to cover the bill. It doesn't matter if you're a woman. You're well paid. You're an executive. Like, that's nothing. Mm. Take care of it. Why not? <laughs> Handle that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but ladies... We appreciate you. We love you. We will be nothing without you Don't guys. Don't try to sweeten it up now. I think you was just talking. We'd be shit. nothing without you guys. You know what I'm saying? Let me feed you. Give you a little macaroni and cheese <laughs> or chicken wings, french fries. Nah, that's the New York shit right there. Yeah, it is. Get a girl for chicken wings chopped up with french fries, barbecue so, sauce, ketchup, she hot you. sauce. Woo! Woo! It's a done deal. <laughs> that's your wife. That was my sister right there, man. I saw she ever came home with after really? her dates. <laughs> Boy, fucking chicken wings and some See, French now fries. I want for a piece of That's crazy. <laughs> Maybe not French fry. Maybe some fried rice. I think it was fried rice they was getting. Okay. All right. Well, we about to go train right after this. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Again, follow Kamoy on all his social platforms. Follow me at Rated R 10 p on Instagram and on TikTok. Follow me, guys. Let's go. And what's your YouTube channel? I'm, oh, you not, re- I'm not really pushing wow. YouTube. Wow. Come on. We, we, Bro, gotta, we, we trying to be YouTube stars out here, That's too dog. much damn social media, man. It is. TikTok, it's YouTube, running a promotion. That's a second page. You got to hire a social media manager. Yeah, then they can want money. Damn right. <laughs> you damn right. <laughs> all right, y'all. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Peace. Peace.